Oh, right. Hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and it's Monday, baby. And I don't always downgrade the US credit rating, but when I do, I make sure I do it on Friday after the market closes so it can set us up for a nice little plunge on a Monday morning. If you don't know about this, Moody's cut US credit outlook from stable to negative. So will the market shrug this off today or not? It probably will. And the reason I'm confident in saying that is if you just put these sorts of things in the context, when we're in a bear market, these sorts of headlines, these sorts of downgrades have significant impact to continuation to the downside, right? You can see it again here, right? The downgrade comes out and we see significant downside follow. But in a bull market, these types of headlines, you know, they don't really give us anything to worry about. As you can see, continued upside happens. And is this time going to be different? I doubt it. And a lot of people will say, yeah, we're in a bear market rally. No, 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 we're not. We're not. We're way too high off the lows. And you can see the green is just about under here. So I think likely, yes, the market is going to shrug this off. Of course, I'm open to being proven wrong. But we saw very nice technical, didn't we? Breakouts on Friday for the S&P. We saw the breakout retest resumption and in the Dow. So I don't know. Show me the chart and I'll tell you the news. The chart says the thing is bullish. So I remain bullish for now. Of course, start to close back below those trend lines. And of course, we'll have a reason then, technically speaking, to flip bearish. Currently, being bearish is pretty crowded, okay? Look at this. The US single stock short flows have increased for the 14th straight week, which is the longest shorting streak ever on record, okay? Take a look at this. Take a good look at this. Everyone's just shorting this market. Everyone is shorting this market. Everyone's living in a fear state. And the market has broken out. Like I said, look, breakout retest, looking for that resumption. So why are you shorting that? <laughs> okay, why are you shorting this? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you follow too many macro bears on Twitter and YouTube. Over in the world of Bitcoin, this is probably based only on on-chain data. So please don't FOMO. But this year, in 2023, we've seen the number of Bitcoin millionaires 3x, okay, almost 3x. So we are now sitting at over 60,000 Bitcoin millionaires as a result of this bull market that started in November of last year. So through this year, like I said, more and more millionaires continue to emerge. And this number is only going to continue to increase as the price continues to increase, right? Over in France, they are loving Bitcoin at the moment, okay? And if we scroll down here, you can see that more French people own crypto, 9%, than they do stocks or ETFs. 7% for stocks and 2% for ETFs. So the French are not a heavy nation of investors by the looks of things, but those that do invest hold crypto. And from France to India, India is projected to exceed the number of crypto users in the US, the UK, Russia and Japan this year alone. And by 2027, India is expected to have over 50 million people adopting crypto. I found this and I thought I'd throw this in here. This is indeed financial advice, okay? Do not listen to men with open mouth disease. Take a good look at this. Shame on every, <laughs> shame on every single one of you. Back to the real world, the SEC needs to make a decision on two spot Bitcoin ETFs by next week. Okay, so again, pause your screen. Take a good look at this. Take a good look at this. Is it possible? Now, I don't think so. I don't think, I think this is maybe too early. I think they're going to wait until we're much higher up to actually launch the ETF. But just imagine the pump if this thing were to be confirmed. And lastly, just before we get into some charts, I wanted to show you this, okay? I've been talking about the hash rate, which just continues to go up and up and up. And of course, as the hash rate goes up, the difficulty has to be adjusted too, so that we don't drain all the Bitcoin out of the supply as a direct result of having more miners connected to the network. The hash rate goes up, difficulty is adjusted every 2016 blocks, roughly every two weeks. And here we go, okay? Difficulty climbs an additional 3.5% to reach a new all-time high of 64.68 trillion. This marks the fifth consecutive rise in the network's difficulty since September the 19th. Take a look at that, okay? Harder than ever to find a block. Again, I say, Bitcoin is the only secure database on the planet. So we'll start with the NASDAQ because look at that, okay? That's a nice looking chart. So are we going to see some chop? I think the futures are slightly red. But again, you know, what is this? Objectively speaking, breakout retest resumption. I can't be bearish here until we at least break down from this line here, okay? So at least we need to get below that before I can entertain being bearish. The S&P, strong close on Friday. So maybe some level of retest of the down sloping red resistance line today. We'll see if that happens. Keep pushing the Dow. We've already seen these charts if you've been here at the weekend. If you haven't, then go and check that out. Some charts that have changed slightly are oil. So I was talking about this, counter trend bounce back into here and then roll over. We'll see if that happens or not. Again, all the while we're below this, then we will continue to push this short. Gold looking for a swing, isn't it? But hasn't found it yet. Silver to me looks heavy. Looks like it wants to follow this yellow squiggle. So we'll see if this can happen or not. But not super excited about silver. If this squiggle plays out down here, I believe is the time. 
Bitcoin, still doing Bitcoin things, isn't it? There's a half cycle low, a perfect 30 day half cycle low due around the 15th of November, which is Wednesday this week, right into that CPI print. So I do wonder if we get some kind of CPI shakeout and then boom, big reversal. That would make sense from a cycle perspective. Otherwise, I remain long and strong and one day at a time as always. Dollar looks like it wants to couch and bounce and roll over and continue down here, doesn't it? Not far from my blue squiggle. So happy days there. And the 10 year yield, once we get this CPI print this week on Wednesday, I expect to follow this yellow squiggle. So hopefully that's what we can look at for this week. If you want a full deep dive TA, then go back and watch Saturday's video. And in the meantime, welcome to the week. I hope you're doing well in life. Until next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.